Hi hooligans, today we are talking about Inside Out 2. Let's just cut right to the chase and ask, is this better than the original? And it's not quite as good, but it's still a really, really solid sequel. It's just very safe. They basically took the template of the original movie and just reused it in a different package. But you know the old adage, if it ain't broke, don't fix it. And even though it was formulaic, it is a formula that is proven to work, especially for Pixar. And you know what? There are still a lot of good things about the movie. And to play devil's advocate, I will say Pixar kind of is forced to play it safe right now because of the risks they took in the past and they all did not pay off. And by that, I'm referring to the movies that have come out since 2020 that all ended up being box office duds. And don't get me wrong, I loved those movies, especially Luca and Turning Red. I thought they were spectacular, but I do think this sequel is still slightly better than all of the ones that have been released, which is good, right? We want Pixar to keep getting better, even if that does mean we'll see more sequels in the future. Also, I talk way more in detail about why Pixar is changing their strategy so that they're focusing on sequels and delivering things that are universally appealing in my last video. And I talk about why Inside Out is the blueprint for what we can expect in the coming years, so make sure to go check out that video. Now let's just talk about the plot of the movie overall. And yes, this is a spoiler review. So this movie is about Riley going to hockey camp and and based on her performance, it'll determine if she gets onto the team in high school. She's also dealing with some friendship drama because two of her besties are moving to a different school and they didn't tell her until now. Also, she's going through puberty now, so we're introduced to a whole new cast of emotions, which include anxiety, ennui, embarrassment, and envy. And then we also learn about a new section in Riley's mind called the sense of self, which is represented as this sort of plant-like structure that grows with memories. It kind of looks like the avatar tree. It's really pretty to look at. So when anxiety moves in, she kicks out all the original emotions out of headquarters because she has these big plans for Riley's future and plans to reshape Riley's entire sense of self. So then the OG emotions must venture through Riley's mind and recover the original sense of self and then return to headquarters to stop anxiety and restore Riley back to her normal self. But eventually anxiety loses control, causing Riley to go into a panic attack and it's up to Joy to save the day. And at the end, all of the emotions learn to work harmoniously because they realize Riley's sense of self actually depends on all of her emotions. And there is an end credit scene where it's kind of just a joke about Riley's deepest, darkest secret is that she burned a hole in the carpet. So the story overall is definitely pretty similar to the plot of the first one, but I will say it does feel a little bit darker, just a little bit, only because anxiety is such a powerful emotion compared to sadness in the first one. And also, I guess because there is no bing bong, there's just a lack of magic and happiness and sunshine and rainbow. Instead of every twist and turn is just teenage angst. Also, this time around, Riley's real life takes a lot more of an active role in the story. This hockey camp is central to her motivations. In the first movie, Riley was almost this passive character where she was sitting back and experiencing the emotions almost as if she was a shell controlled by these little things in her brain. Which, thinking about it, I guess that is technically what humans are. But this time around, her emotions are much more dynamic and ever-changing depending on her situation and they have to adapt. And in real life, Riley makes some incredible incredibly poor decisions, including literally committing a crime by trespassing the school and stealing her teacher's notebook. And even though her real life plays much more of a bigger part in this story, the inside of her mind also expands a lot this time. So of course, as I mentioned, there is the new section in her brain called the sense of self. And it's really interesting to think about when someone says that, oh, you're not acting like yourself. And in Riley's case, it's literally because anxiety is creating a whole different sense of self. I also want to mention that it was a cool detail that whenever anxiety planted her seeds at the sense of self, the vibrations of the different vine thingies look different compared to every other emotion. And eventually when anxiety does take over 
and Riley's new sense of self is that she doesn't feel good enough or she doesn't feel worthy enough. I think that was really, really effectively done and it definitely hits home because I feel like that's something a lot of people can relate to. Another new location in her mind is the vault. It was a really, really funny moment, although a little bit unnecessary. This is where her secrets and suppressed emotions go. So it'd be interesting to see if there are other emotions lurking around in the vault in the future. Then we're introduced to a couple of other characters that have these different animation styles. So first we're introduced to this character called Bluffy and Pouchy. It's definitely a reference to either Blue's Clues or Dora or a mix of both. They're in this old cartoon style. Then we meet Slash Blade, which is like this anime Final Fantasy character who is animated in like this PlayStation 2 low poly style. It was really interesting. Then there was Deep Dark Secret that looked just like Dark from Orion in the Dark. Anyway, I thought they were all really, really funny. And even though this whole section was kind of unnecessary, it was really, really fun. Another new thing was the sarcasm. A lot of really, really good puns. This part was also hilarious. It kept on repeating everything back sarcastically. I thought that was a really good joke. And I think that's another strength of the movie is that the comedic moments were really, really good. And a few other punny parts of the brain were the brain storm, where it was a literal storm of ideas. And then there was the stream of consciousness. Now let's talk a little bit about the messaging of the movie. It's all about finding your identity and much like the first movie where it teaches us to embrace sadness. This movie teaches us to embrace our flaws because it also is an important part of what makes our identity. I think it's a good message for sure on paper, but I think it's a little more complicated than the first movie and I don't know if they executed it quite as well. Also, I thought it was way more heavy handed and on the nose this time since they were trying to beat this message since the beginning of the movie, while the first movie was more about leading us astray to believe that Joy was the hero of the story, but then we got to know that sadness was also an important part of Riley's emotions. But you know what, this theme of identity is just universally appealing, just like I mentioned before, how Pixar wants this clear mass appeal, and I think they did that here. Literally everyone who has ever existed can relate to trying to understand who we are as people, or who we are meant to be as people. Although I will definitely say this movie probably resonates with a slightly older audience, I don't think kids younger than middle school will quite grasp the complexities of like anxiety and teenage angst because first of all the story is about puberty so they haven't really gone through it yet so i do think maybe some of the things would go over their heads but the majority of the population will probably appreciate these new emotions especially teenagers that are going through it at the same time i also think there were emotional moments in this movie but it never quite hit the same peak as the bing bong scene in the original but i'm honestly okay with that because i feel like if they did have like this specific moment where you're supposed to cry i think that would be trying to copy the first movie a little too exactly plus it would just be obvious that they are trying to emotionally manipulate us for the sake of making us cry. Okay, so let's talk a little bit more about the original emotions. So all of the emotions take more of an active role this time around. Besides sadness, sadness actually gets a little less to do. There were also voice changes to fear and disgust, but I honestly don't really remember how they sounded and they didn't sound too different. It was actually interesting to me because I thought sadness was the one that sounded the most different, even though it is the same actress. And speaking of sadness, sadness gets separated from the other emotions and is the one to infiltrate anxiety's coup, but unfortunately fails. And so she still kind of ends up playing much less of an important role this time around since she's not the main villain that we're dealing with. Disgust got kind of a cool moment where we see one of her abilities is to detect very, very minor changes in people's expressions. I think it makes total sense that disgust is the emotion with that ability because I feel like when we're disgusted about things, it's really hard to hide the emotion on our face. Brother, uh. Fear and anger are kind of there for the comedic relief. And in case you guys don't understand the difference between fear and anxiety, they actually explicitly tell you in the movie, fear is what you can see and anxiety is what you can't 
so it's about the past it's about the future but i do understand they feel very very similar so i almost wish anxiety and fear were like siblings or something like that i think that could have been something really interesting but i'm definitely not mad at how they portrayed anxiety also we learned that anger is a bit of a softy which is kind of out of character for him but it's it's cute for him okay let's talk about joy it's nice to see joy is not trying to control everyone we see in the beginning that she's actually letting sadness express herself freely letting everyone express themselves but her old habits come back when the new emotions take over she starts becoming very very controlling again we even see her eventually breaking down and admitting that being positive all the time is very very exhausting and you know what despite her being sometimes annoying i kind of get it because without joy as the leader it's very dysfunctional for the other emotions it's very difficult for things to get done in riley's brain joy also kind of learns the exact same lesson from the first movie which is that she needs to stop trying to control everything because even the bad parts of riley are important for her development overall i do think that the realization when she said growing up means that you need joy less that was a really good line and that definitely was like one of the moments that I could see people crying at. It also kind of reflects the scene in the very first movie when she was surrounded by a bunch of scrapped memories and she found a memory that helped her bring her motivation back in the first movie, but in this movie, she couldn't find any memories that would help her, so that was a cool contrast. And obviously with puberty comes acne, braces, extreme mood swings, parents having to deal with all of that, which by the way was really really funny, especially how the dad reacted. But more importantly, there are the new emotions which are kind of portrayed in a villainous way. First, let's talk about ennui. I love that there are portrayed as a French person because I remember when they released the trailers, no one knew how to pronounce Ennui, so I thought that was kind of funny. I also do think Ennui is like a good teenage emotion because a lot of teenagers are, you know, too cool to enjoy things or express emotions. And Ennui is also portrayed as like this edgy emo kid on their phone all the time, so I thought that was funny. Envy is so cute. I want an Envy plushie. And I thought Ayo Adebri's voice acting was just perfect, it was great. And the one problem with Envy though is that I feel like it didn't necessarily always represent Envy. I feel like it was just more of an, a mini anxiety. Like Riley wasn't ever explicitly jealous of anyone. She was more just wanted the respect of the older kids, but it was never outright being jealous of someone. So as much as I loved Envy, I think her character was like, kind of weak. Then there was Embarrassment, who acted kind of as Anxiety's silent bodyguard, which I found so funny because of how big Embarrassment is. And it turns out Embarrassment is secretly a good emotion or like a hero in the end. I think it's because deep down, Riley was ashamed of her actions, especially like trespassing and stealing people's notebooks. And it's kind of true in real life because in some instances, shame can be good to prevent you from doing stupid shit, but it can also be a tool to fuel anxiety even more. And now let's talk about anxiety who is the main character of this movie pretty much and I think the best part of the movie. And a fun fact is that Riley's hockey jerseys at the end were also anxiety's color where it's orange and white. Also shout out to Maya Hawk because she was the absolute perfect voice casting for this role. I can't imagine anyone else voicing anxiety. And you know what? Her character commands the screen just as much as Joy because she's the leader of the new group. So it's nice to see another emotion be able to match Joy's level of confidence and also controlling nature. Also, anxiety is just so relatable for everyone, especially younger generations who grew up on social media like Gen Z, Gen Alpha. I thought the part when Riley was self-conscious about the way she was walking, I was like, that is so relatable because have you ever just walked out in public and was just overthinking the way you walk and you just feel like you're weird? Like, why do we walk? that way like why why is walking so awkward i also love that anxiety was portrayed as this like really caffeinated person drinking a bunch of energy drinks because sometimes you just can't go to bed like 
almost as if you drink a bunch of energy drink, but it's just anxiety. I also thought the fact that anxiety infiltrated imagination land is a really, really creative way to express how anxiety works in real life because you kind of begin to spiral and make up the worst case scenarios in your imagination. The one thing that I kind of had an issue with is how they solved the panic attack at the end because this was supposed to be the emotional climax right but it was kind of just solved easily anxiety was like in this tornado type of thing then joy pulled her out and eventually they just all hugged and then the problem was solved but in real life a panic attack is much more difficult to get through i think there's a lot of techniques that they could have portrayed in this movie like grounding yourself or focusing on breathing because yes, anxiety is a common emotion that people face, but it's also a serious mood disorder that people also have. So I think it would have been nice to maybe portray a better way of calming yourself down through a panic attack. And that's the other thing, maybe someone get Riley a therapist. Oh, and by the way, another emotion was Nostalgia, who was just basically a cameo, but she was a really cute, she was like this little old lady, and it does make me wonder what other emotions have not shown up yet. Anyway, overall, I would give this movie a 7.5 out of 10, maybe an 8 out of 10, but I would probably have to rewatch it. Even though some of the metaphors don't work perfectly, I think the movie was definitely enjoyable to watch. There were things that they wanted to say. It was definitely one of the better Pixar sequels for sure. And now I'm curious to see if they do end up making an Inside Out 3 or God forbid even more how they're going to balance out all the emotions because there's a lot of emotions already. Also remember to check out my other video where I talked about Inside Out 1 and how it's impacting Pixar right now. Other than that, I will see you guys in the next video. Bye.